Caddis Maximus here, this time with a review of the Harbor Freight Amos IR20. This is their new high-end 2100 degree Fahrenheit or 1150 degrees Celsius uh, non-contact pyrometer. And I've been doing a little bit more research. I'm not going to do a super detailed review here, but I will compare it to some other units that I have here and try to clear up some misconceptions. Uh, one of which is how these work when they rate these such as an IR20 or a 20 to 1 or say a 12 to 1, sometimes they're even cheaper, 10 to 1 ratio. These are kind of like seeing eyes or like infrared seeing eyes. And one thing you have to note is the housings cannot be overheated on these. Many people damage these mistakenly by getting too close to really hot surfaces and taking a measurement. That can actually ruin these. They're designed to really be op operate at their uh, intended distances such as this one being about 20 inches away gives you a one inch target area if you have all let's say you've hot and cold nails or pieces of metal and then your measurement area crosses over all of them it'll give you an artificially high reading and I didn't know that before now I have noticed on this unit which has a more focused field of vision it does work on thinner objects such as we have this fully operational and running heated up soldering iron and we can see that with the 12 or the 12 to 1 here and these have fresh batteries the laser pointer is only for general guidance and you don't want to get too close if the heat is too much for your hand it's going to be too much for the unit and you want to pull it back some but I'm just going to wave it around to try to figure out the very hottest temperature I can at about half the distance about six inches away so that's like a, a half inch spot we can see this can pick up about 435 and I like this unit because it has uh, a built-in min-max as well as adjustable emissivity really for $20 even though this only goes up to a thousand degrees the old unit's great the big difference of the new unit uh, is one you're paying for a much better sensor and that's also evidenced by the lens if we take a quick look down inside we can see that this the new unit has like some kind of actual coated optics where the old thousand degree unit just uses a standard plastic lens which I've seen in pretty much all low temperature uh, infrared thermometers but this unit for oddly enough doesn't have a mid max mode it has adjustable emissivity it has this mode where you can set a reference temperature and it'll show red for being above and blue for being below you can kind of set the range that it operates at through this function but no min max and I thought that was a real odd omission for a much more expensive unit even though it is better build quality there's a rubber over mold rubber over mold on the front and back which is much thicker than the cheaper $20 unit over there and we can see that being a 20 to 1 ratio I mean it's meant for much higher temperature so it's going to be uh, meant to be operated at uh, a longer distance and it also does seem to beep and I haven't found a way to turn that off every time you do something but if we start waving it around I'm a little further away about eight inches and we can see it's already picking up higher temperatures than the other one did just because it is a higher quality unit and better optics but that is still not a true accurate measurement and that's the kind of the whole point if I really want to know how hot the soldering iron really is without question I would need to have something like a contact pyrometer this is meant for 2000 degrees but for you to actually touch it so if I were to touch against the barrel of that and you have to press pretty hard if I can get this thing in just the right spot sometimes it's a little difficult with these contact type there we go I'm getting much higher temperatures than I was getting even remotely to the Amos and that's just to show the point these this these infrared non-contact will not give you an accurate temperature of something that is very small and anytime I've ever had somebody comment otherwise I bring out one of this pyrometer and show that you know this soldering irons a lot hotter than you can effectively measure as one of these you would have to get so close to the soldering iron that you may actually risk uh, causing potential sensor damage and I don't want to do that because I'd have to be super duper close so that this little stick actually just would fill the whole field of vision and this hole is still pretty large 
And then there's also a missivity. I do like that the instruction manual here does include a quick little chart telling you about the different levels of emissivity. They actually give you another tip where you can take like black electrical tape if you're trying to get a good temperature of very shiny surfaces such as uh, mirror glass for some reason or stainless steels where you put some electrical tape and let it settle and get to the same temperature and then you leave the emissivity just set at 95 and that's a nice workaround and I kind of like that. I did want to point to one kind of a neat upgrade here. I have to turn off the light, but this is a nice dark surface. Is they significantly upgraded the lasers to where you can see it kind of has like a star shower effect. And I like that because that is actually designed to not just kind of pinpoint, but it's actually showing you the measurement area. And we can see just to get onto a soldering iron, I would have had to be at least that close, if not closer. And that's just not how these things are designed to be measured. If you're going to be that close, then use a contact thermometer. Now I'm using a large socket here just because it's very temperature stable and it's pretty dark, so it works pretty well with these units. What I can tell you about these two units is this randomly out of the boxes, probably many months apart, have just about the very exact same readings. And I'm sure this one's just a little bit more accurate because of the better optics. Say both of them do have nice backlights, although this inverse one really provides a nice high contrast. If we start comparing to the original one, the Harbor Freight had been selling forever, and I even have a Fluke 71 here. Let's see if I can get all these operating, all pointing at the <laughs> same object at the same time. Probably won't with the Fluke because it operates totally differently. And there we go. This reads a little bit low. And I find that the fluke is pretty much the same way. It ends up reading, if we can get it to show up here. No, it's doing pretty good. It's about, we can see 74, but it tends to read a little bit low. This is a much older, real basic kind of low temperature fluke. But I just wanted to show that all these units are well within general calibration of each other. And they're actually pretty reliable. Even, you know, this old cheesy Harbor Freight one here or a Sentec one, which is kind of a shame because uh, I kind of like these little ones because they use two AA batteries. The rest of these use nine volts, which is a, easier for electronic engineers to design equipment around, but is more of a hassle for users. Primarily because with the nine volts, at least in these, it is one of the traditional wired connections. And so, you know, those eventually wear out and is always a hassle. Part of it is we can see on this that there's just no visible screws. And I believe that these are indeed uh, either ultrasonically welded or either or are using some pretty strong plastic clips. And uh, I don't know about the serviceability. Also, with the prices Harbor Freight's charging, they only have a 90 degree, 90 day warranty. Now this unit did come with like a nice little carry bag with like a little embroidered logo. So they're including a few extra things. What I was curious about is there's no provision to put a lanyard. Where the other one has a provision to put a wrist strap, which is actually pretty handy. Because many situations you're not using these just on the ground walking around. These are used by all sorts of professionals. They're used by electricians to see if circuit breakers are getting near their limits and are generating a bunch of heat. They're used by uh, industrial, industrial service technicians to see if motors are getting too hot or if bearings are getting too hot. Uh, oftentimes, if there's problems with hydraulic systems and hydraulic pumps, hydraulic valves, the failing pump or the failing valve will be generating extra heat. And they'll use these to detect them. People in heating, ventilating, ventilation, and air conditioning use these all the time to figure out, you know, why is the air 70 degrees out of this vent? And we can see that it's 80 degrees out of this vent. You know, what's going on there? And so not having some kind of provision just to prevent you from dropping it in those situations seems odd when they always had a tradition. But a lot of companies do that. Like this Fluke actually has a provision for a lanyard, but it's not available when you have the boot on it. So... <laughs> Harbor Freight isn't limited to odd decide decisions. And these things are accurate in those situations. These things are accurate when you want to measure how hot a turbocharger is or how hot an exhaust manifold is because those are pretty broad surfaces. You're going to easily be able to be quite a distance away 
You're not going to have any problems with the unit housing getting too hot. Apparently, when the house, the second reason you don't want the housing to get hot is it apparently will add that infrared heat in addition to whatever it's measuring. Just because the heat's actually radiating in here and going into the lens, artificially inflating it. So you really do have to be pretty careful about that. And then, yeah, the big deal is that this thing will do high temperatures. I wish I had something set up here so I could get this to display 2,000 degrees. A lot of fires and flames are actually going to be a lot hotter than 2,000 degrees. But this could be so useful in uh, heat treatment. This could be particularly useful because you could actually just point it at the piece of steel that you're heat treating and really see, say, if your 4140 steel is actually at 1,535 degrees. So it would be, and verifying that heat treatment ovens are actually getting to the temperature that you want. Really pretty handy. And I basically always wanted one of these kind of units uh, just for the automotive applications. So that you can see a red hot turbocharger and say, look at that thing. It's, you know, 1,200 degrees. And that was always a shame about all these others I've collected is I always wanted a nice one. But they're always a, under over $100. So I kind of accept this. I think... For 60 bucks on a short warranty, uh, it's not a bad unit. It includes the most important functionality, which is being able to adjust the emissivity settings. And that's just done by pressing and holding the set button for a minute. And then it'll go to this E, and you just use the up and down arrows to change it. You can press set once just to convert it from Celsius to Fahrenheit. So overall, I think it's a pretty decent value. And really a nice upgrade to the infrared thermometers that the Harbor Freight has had. Really, this little one for 20 I think really both of these for 80 bucks is really a pretty good deal. Because you have a more of a standard one that's more compact and easier to carry around, say, in your pocket. And then you have like a much nicer one uh, just for when you really want to use for higher temp temperature applications. And for the price, they are better than just basic base model flukes. They're obviously not as good as a high-end fluke, but a high-end fluke infrared thermometer can be quite expensive. And compared to their original unit, which was fairly trusty, uh, these are just so much better. They've really come a long way. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing to sometimes my overly wordy reviews. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time. Caddis Maximus out.